Okay, hi everybody. Uh, we're from South End on Sea, and um, we're here today to talk about the work we've been doing in South End, and also about 5G. Um, our topics of discussion are our introduction, things we have done as candidates, our 5G concerns, our further research, our 5G win, and the National Residents Association. During the last four years, I have protested and petitioned against the atrocities happening in our country. Uh, in 2020, many of our freedoms were under attack, as well as our bodily autonomy. So I started a branch of the Freedom Network. I started learning about common law, organising meetings and educational training, helped many carers and employees with legal aid in order to keep their jobs, held meetings for people to find community, feel heard and become empowered. We organised outreach, created leaflets, started group allotments, got organised and made directories of our skills as a contingency plan should we be shunned out of society, unable to trade or access particular services. At the time, this effort was necessary as without the knowledge shared within this community, I and many others may have been coerced into making decisions that could have potentially ruined our health, businesses and relationships for the rest of our lives. It was also a lifeline for so many who were being ostracised from their families, spouses, colleagues and greater society simply for thinking critically, expressing their own opinions and empathetically caring for the safety of others. More than one person told me that the Freedom Network Hub had kept them sane and stopped their suicidal thoughts. Many people kindly donated their time, their knowledge and their skills for free because we all thought it was necessary. In 2021, I was thrown out and blacklisted from my GP for refusing to wear a face mask to walk into reception and pick up a prescription for my husband, even though the staff were behind a floor to ceiling glass and plastic screen. They could not simply just pass the designated prescription through the slot to me. So I started a PHA hub, which is a People's Health Alliance hub, which is another grassroots non-political party. Uh, having been a holistic therapist myself for the last 10 years, it just made sense. Not only could people not get NHS treatment, not and now still not get NHS treatment, many have lost faith in what it offers. Many ex-NHS staff members that left the NHS during 2020 for obvious reasons operate in PHA hubs across the country and are now able to use their knowledge without constraint. So although I have re-registered with a new GP, my main healthcare provider is now my local Chinese herbalist and fellow PHA therapists. The PHA was formed after ambulances stopped coming out for many unvaccinated patients out of the fear that this group of people in society would not be able to access public health care, to, to help the vaccine injured, but also to help those who simply cannot get the appointments and care they need from the NHS. Many people that would not usually choose holistic therapies are being forced to because it's become necessary. Also in 2020, the Coronavirus Act stated that children could be detained for 14 days in a safe space Without their parents' consent, the only consent was needed was from a teacher, um, and so I deregistered my children. This, and finding about, out about the RSE curriculum that we've just talked about, so I won't go into that, were the deciding factors for me to do so. School lockdowns had many trial runs in 2021. This was not well publicised, but was and is very real with many of my local schools putting up high fences around their perimeters and the suggested guidelines for school lockdowns being a significant air pollution or an incident related to terrorism, I can only help but think that these are going to be a trend in the very near future. Biometrics and facial scanning recognition have been in the UK schools since 2021 for school dinners. This technology is used most, in most schools in China, but mostly to data harvest, monitor and control children's thoughts in order to obtain better academic performance from them. It is also worth, worth noting that there is some evidence that proves that 5G signals do not pass well through RAC. Children were being coerced in schools to receive COVID vaccinations 
with some schools sending out leaflets with a cartoon suggesting kids lie to their parents about getting theirs if they have to. I did much school outreach at this time with countering campaigns and legally serving school staff with liability papers. This was definitely the hardest out of all the outreach subjects I have tackled, as the children were passionately defensive and highly indoctrinated to think in a one-way track, and the teachers even more so. Just, six, just months after, there are at least six local cases of children dying suddenly at school or in their sleep. Making sure my sons were not one of these children made my choice of home education necessary. Not only did I attend many protests, and I helped organise, I helped organise my own local one against vaccine passports with many of the people from my three local stands in the parks. It was this local protest that got into our local newspaper with neutral positive reviews. But days later, the same paper wrote a completely false and fabricated story about something that allegedly happened after the protest had finished. I began to wonder if all of our efforts would amount to anything with the system and the mainstream media doing such a good job at twisting the truth. After looking to local political parties and people who were in the position to speak for me and others like me, I found and joined the Heritage Party, where I did not have to fight to have my concerns and opinions heard, be shouted down and labelled a conspiracy theorist, but instead given a platform to speak freely and be taken seriously about everything that was important to me and to be supported in doing so alongside like-minded people, critical thinkers and those who are still in touch with common sense. The silver lining as a result of these atrocities, we have formed empowered and more informed communities, the experience causing personal and spiritual growth in many of us. I am personally grateful for this, but if the Heritage Party had been in control over the last four years, would all of this have been necessary? Hello everyone. Um, I started this journey in 2020 when I found myself protesting in London, opposing the lockdowns and the vaccine mandates. It was at these protests I met David. I had also carried on my work at home writing to the council and local MPs with regards to the damage the lockdowns were doing to local businesses and communities. I also filled in many government consultations online opposing vaccine passes and vaccine mandates. <clears throat> but we are here today because we have a very important message to you all about the new infrastructure, 5G cell towers that are being installed across our country in our residential areas. In January of 2023, I saw a 5G cell tower was being installed in my ward near to where I live. I had heard about the health risks that these towers cause and the fact that they devalue people's properties. I asked my friends and residents and local businesses in close proximity to the mast whether they had received a letter from the council informing them of the mast being implemented. Canvassing 40 doors, I collated signatures to state these residents had not received letters. I have sent this information into the council pointing out that they have not followed the correct procedure laid out in the telecommunications code of conduct by not informing the residents and giving them a chance to object. I'm still awaiting a reply. That is why, amongst other issues, I decided to stand as a Heritage Party candidate to bring attention to this huge, huge problem as we now have 60 various 5G towers in South End. South End is set to become a smart city by 2050, for which there's been no public consultation. Things that we have done since becoming candidates. I mean, outreach was something we, were, we did before becoming candidates, but we have done specific outreach on some of our manifesto points during this year. Um, we've done door-to-door -door canvassing with paper petitions, attended council meetings, we've hosted a Heritage Party open meeting in Westcliff, which David attended, constant emailing. I also created RSC awareness packs um, which I researched by signing up uh, for a free trial for some of the RSE curriculums they're using in school. One of them was called Yasmin and Tom, and you can, you can do that yourself if you're interested, in, but it's not nice. 
Um, and I gave these packs out to parents and we've had meetings in school with teachers and parents presenting these packs as well. Um, Lara had an article published in one of our local papers regarding the 5G towers. We've assisted a local resident in her court case about being fired over her freedom of speech after she um, was dropped. A conservative candidate was helping her, a counsellor, sorry, not a candidate, uh, but they're too busy for her now. Um, it's not only important because she was fired over her freedom of speech, she was a teacher, um, but there's multiple layers to that where a lot of teachers that are against RSC are being fired so they can be replaced by younger teachers that are straight out of university. Um, we've helped local residents with housing issues, attended conferences such as the AICS conference in Knightsbridge, lots of 5G contesting, um, and also just to say this was our first year running and we joined with just days to the cutoff point, so we missed postal votes this year, so we're hoping for much better results next year. Uh, we didn't block out any time to campaign because we kind of just joined on a whim. So hopefully next year goes a lot better. Okay, so our main concerns about 5G are... Next, we do health stuff, yeah. So the health issues, as you can see on our slide, these are the most frequent symptoms of those who live near 5G towers and this is referred to as microwave syndrome. The microwave syndrome, microwave sickness or illness, is an effect of exposure to non-thermal levels of microwave radiation. This was reported back in the 1960s. Another term for the illness is radio frequency sickness, um, or now known as people sensitive to EMFs. In studies of workers exposed to RF radiation, the researchers reported that nervous system was most commonly affected together with the cardiovascular system. Exposed workers complained of symptoms of, such as fatigue, dizziness, headaches, sleep disorders, anxiety, pain in the heart region and breathing difficulties. It has also been observed that in general, symptoms declined once the exposure had ended. 5G exposure combined with 4G caused symptoms consistent with microwave syndrome. The limits for allowing exposure to RF or microwave radiation in most countries around the world is recommended by WHO and the European Commission. They're still based on heating, thermal effects that appear within a very short time of exposure. Protection against long-term exposure and any other harmful effects that are not based on heating are thereby excluded. The guidelines based on heating are set by the International Commission on Non-Ionising Radiation, ICNRP. ICNRP has been heavily criticised for having ties with the telecommunications industry and for recommending limits that are insufficient for protection against non-thermal effects of radiation. The ICNRP guidelines are important to the telecommunications industry, thereby facilitating the deployment of 5G and the wireless society. The current ICNERP guidelines say that there is no guarantee that people with a pacemaker or other medical implants can live or work safely in areas with 5G. There are two ladies with pacemakers down my own road, which is surrounded by four 5G towers. No public consultation was given before these were implemented. Aside from health, 5G infrastructure is the key to a successful rollout of Agenda 2030, constant surveillance and control, a cashless society, even your thoughts being monitored and even changed without your consent or even your knowledge. So basically, zero freedom. Okay, so in January of this year, I joined the Adult Child Health and Environmental Support Group set up by Nicholas Martin, who is a counsellor in Berkshire. This organisation is the UK version of the Children's Health Defence Organisation in the USA. He has also set up a group called Counselors Against 5G. From the regular meetings with AICS, I've learned more about how this is affecting the world on a global scale. They are having the same problem in New York, where residents are not able to contest these towers on historical or conservation grounds. I also attended a webinar at the Royal Society of Medicine. Many doctors and scientists spoke, including Professor Kent Chamberlain, who is shedding light on the dangers of radiation exposure. 
Professor Ken Chamberlain originally worked in the telecommunications industry and believed the technology was safe. He has now, through research, concluded it is in fact detrimental to our health and is calling for the industry to admit this so health and safety protocol can be implemented. One of the main companies installing these towers is Three, which is a Chinese company. Why are these towers being approved with no risk assessments by the council or environmental assessments or consideration of data harvesting by these, these telecommunications companies? There's been no transparency with the public with regards to this smart city infrastructure being deployed. We are raising awareness within the councils that these towers emit radiation and it has been proven long-term exposure to this causes cancers, especially in children. I was listening to the radio this week and they announced that the biggest cause of death in children in this, in this country now is through cancer. Exposing our children to this radiation on a daily basis could be a factor as the cancer rates are not going down, they're only going up. And all the research that has been done around this, we still don't know the main cause. Or is it just being covered up? So we have had a few 5G wins. Um, our main one, uh, we were contacted by local residents as Heritage Party candidates to help with regards to objecting to a 5G tower that was due to be implemented right outside their houses, literally on the ends of their driveways. Um, this tower would also have been next to a children's park and only 200 metres from a primary school. We only had a week to contest this um, from the time they notified us about it, so we canvassed the area as much as we could. We informed the residents, advised them on how to object online. Uh, many people were unaware of how to do so, um, and even if they did, they had problems because it's a really tricky process to do, which I think is on purpose. It's really hard to do. Um, we managed to get 69 residents to sign our paper petition and many to use our online portal. Um, so we have managed to stop this tower being passed. Um, the residents were extremely happy with the outcome and they held a champagne reception <laughs> thanks of our efforts and the elected local councillors uh, attended. There was two independents, one conservative, one green I think. Um, but it was very clear to the residents that the two unelected Heritage Party candidates had done the most work in this case. So it was a big win for us. Uh, during our canvassing, we've had the pleasure of also working with the National Residents Association. This is a UK-wide, non-political, grassroots organisation set up by Cassie Langford and her team in Swindon, who have had great success in contesting these towers. The main driver for our organisation is to build back our local communities, which have been eroded away. We need our local residents to come together to contest these towers, which are being put up in our residential areas. The National Residents Association gives the locals training and tools to stand up to their councils and make them listen to the people. They are the boots on the ground, spreading the word to the people to help them take back their power. We need zero radiation, not net zero. <laughs> Uh, because we don't yet have enough Heritage Party candidates across the country, uh, we have worked with fellow Heritage candidate Sh Sean and some people from the National Residents Association to put together a leaflet pack that we have here today if anyone's interested in taking some. Uh, it just informs you, um, in layman's term, how you would go about contesting a 5G tower in your local area or how to assist other people in doing so. Um, and we just wanted to leave you uh, with a video, if it plays.
Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.